I got two more things to share with you that I think Muslims need to hear that is not said clearly enough. So I'm going to take it upon myself to say it to you even if I get in trouble. Allah says, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبْ هَذَا حَلَالُ وَهَذَا حَرَامُ don't just make up stuff on your own and just use carelessly use the words halal and what? Haram. What do we do? Kids are in an Islamic school. One kid is eating uh, chewing. Yo, that don't eat chewing gum. That's haram. The other one is playing a video. Video, video games are haram. The other one is, you know, no matter what you do, the first word that comes out of the kid's mouth is what? Haram. And it doesn't, children didn't invent that themselves. They didn't invent that themselves. They got that from their parents. They got that from a culture where we love casually to use the word haram for everything. By the way, the fuqaha of Islam, who know a lot more than you and I do, they would think a thousand times before they would call something haram. And nowadays, for you and me, it is so easy, man. Bidu, bidu, bidu. Haram, haram, haram. It's so easy. As a matter of fact, you know what our default position is? Haram until proven halal. <laughs> Yo, why are you laughing in the masjid? That's haram. Why are you sitting like that? It's haram. Why are you standing like that? It's, oh God, man. You know, we don't, we, we, and we, you know when you do this, you know what happens? You take things that Allah did not impose on people, and you like to impose on people. Your version of haram. Your version of halal, that's not even rooted in any kind of deep knowledge. You never sat deeply with a, with a faqih and discussed the issue. Your deep research involved Google. And you didn't even finish the whole search. He, they auto-entered the rest of it. And you didn't even read the whole article. You read the first line. And you don't even know who the author is. It's some, it says Sheikh, so it must be good. You don't even know. My teacher was telling me one time, one of my teachers, you know, Shaykh Akram Nadawi was telling me that he was teaching in a class, a, a hadith class. And his student, one of the students, he loves to get dalil for everything. So he was telling him what's the, he was telling the students that certain things that people consider haram, actually the fuqaha did not consider it haram. And so the student, young guy, because you know he's going to do amr bil ma'roof and nahi al munkar in the classroom to his shaykh, he looks at the, shaykh, ma huwa dalil? Where's the evidence? And so the Shaykh sat down and said, Rawa Fulanun, An Fulan, An Fulan, An Fulan, An Fulan, An Fulan. And he gave him like 20 names that this is halal. And he asked the student, Are you satisfied? And he goes, Yeah. And he goes, You monkey, I just named all the students in the class. <laughs> now shut up and listen. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People just love hearing words. They don't even know what that means. It's shallow knowledge. And you're using it to pass judgment on people. This is, a, this is chaos. This is absolute chaos. And you know what it does? It takes, you know, you, you, some kid who's got some issue, he's doing something. It's not, it's not the best thing, but it's not haram either. But you tell him, you're doing haram. Then he starts thinking to himself, ah, yeah, you know what? I'm already neck deep in haram. I can't get out of it anyway. Might as well go out and live it up before I die. Because we make the haram wide and the halal limited. And what does Allah say? He, he gave us a few things we should stay away from. And the rest of this earth, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا we reverse engineered the revelation of Allah because we are narrow-minded. We brought our narrow-mindedness to the word of Allah, to the messenger of Allah's teachings, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and thus making the life miserable for people, just hard for people. 